It's time to go mushroom hunting. Uh, we had quite a bit of early rain and then we had a lot of warm weather. My real hope for today is that we're gonna find a bunch of queen bowl eats and uh, I'm sure we'll find some kokura if we find bowl eats. More likely we'll find a bunch of kokura. The thing about the bowl eats is like they're there and then they're gone because bugs really like them and they get in them right away while there's still little buttons. It's gonna be hard to talk and walk at the same time. Not going very far, but it's pretty steep. So to keep any kind of pace and talk at the same time. At 56 and not being as good a shape as I could because I can only move so much because my stupid post Lyme disease BS that I deal with. There's some nice big tan oak logs here we look for oyster mushrooms on those. It's basically too late for oyster mushrooms, but occasionally you'll find like a flush of late ones. I thought it'd be nice to get out, hike around a little bit, get my blood moving. I get so caught up in all the stuff I need to do around home that sometimes I just have to say, screw it. I should be doing this, that, and the other thing. Let's go mushroom hunting. Not to mention it's part of my home economy. If I can find a bunch of queen bull eats and dry them, I'll be eating them all year. And if I go check my ridge spot and there's a bunch there, that gives me like incentive because there's a higher probability that they're gonna be coming up elsewhere. I should really get down in here. I found all kinds of good stuff down in this little spot right here. All right, we're already at the ridge road. I'm headed to a favorite spot up there. It's just been really good in the past for bull eats and kokura, sometimes uh, chanterelles. I did find a really nice kokura the other day, so I know they're out. Look at this. That, probably a squirrel pulled that up and sat here eating on it and then left it there. And there's a bed right here, presumably a deer bed. Now, look at this erosion, like, you know, not much leaf cover here and you can see literally see how the dirt has been moved down the hill. Now think about hundreds of years, year after year, just the squirrels digging for nuts on hillsides like this. Every single year that there's any acorns, the squirrels are out here digging. Every time they dig, 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 dirt down the hill, dirt down the hill, dirt down the hill. Clearly there's more dirt at the top here being generated that's slowly being moved down by animals and water. And, and then there's the bigger animals who move, like me, who move dirt down the hill just by stepping. And if we look at this trail right here, this looks a lot more like a bear trail or human trail than a deer trail. I don't see the usual kind of like little sharp hoof marks and stuff. It's like big impressions and like slips and like something heavy with big feet. They're so big and impactful that it doesn't take that many passes to make an impression. I'm not saying I'm sure that's that was bare sign, but seems probable. <laughs> Looks like it. Here it is again. See this? Push. It could be that you know, they, they're going where I'm going, where there's a lot of cover. It's tangled and, and quiet. Maybe they're spending the day there, or did for a little while, while making little foraging trips out. Or maybe I'm just full of it. But whatever it is, I'm still following that same trace. And what do we have here? Bear poop. I was right. It doesn't look super fresh or super old. Like, if you look up here, I'm not seeing a bear coming up and down this over and over. So I, I've gone off the trail. A little discouraging that I haven't seen anything really interesting yet, mushroom-wise. Oh, here we're back on the bear tracks. I mean, look at that. That's not a deer, what a deer hoof does. I won't be surprised if I get up there and find that a bear has beat me to it and eaten most of the good mushrooms already. And if there is a bear anywhere near, it's probably already heard me like way down the ridge. All right, so here we are. It's just a really great area for mushroom hunting. In a good year, I'd expect to get here and be like, you know, mushroom, seeing mushrooms everywhere. And I see like one mushroom. Okay, there's, there's a couple more back there. Probably nothing good, but kind of keep our eyes out for that sign of that bear or bears. Ah, there we go, there we go, right there. Ah, ah, ah. That is definitely not a bull eat. If I hang it up here, 
you know, there's a chance this will open up and shed spores all over the place. And I am seeing signs of like digging and that digging is not about acorns probably. This is an area where all the, the tan oaks have been cut down systematically on purpose, clearly on purpose, and they've grown back is these these tangled stands. Look, that one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trunks going up because it was cut down. So as far as like mature tan oaks, there's gonna be few if any of them in here. These regrowth ones probably are not producing much in the way of acorns. And it may be about like, you know, the fruiting bodies like this that we think of as mushrooms or it could be like truffles or truffle-like mushrooms that grow underground and the rodents can smell those. Like they seem to eat these nasty things called deer truffles, which ugh, uh, don't go there. You might look up a video and be like, well, you know, they're not good to eat, but they're not poisonous and be tempted. Let me tell you a little story about that. So, oh, Kokora. Unfortunately, uh, it's old. You know, I, I mean, it doesn't smell fishy. So checklists that I use for Kokoras, if you use this on my advice alone, you're a dumbass. I'll just tell you anyway. Uh, the cup, which I just pulled off. This is the remnants of the, the cup stem that's either hollow or basically hollow but filled with cottony stuff like this one is we can go up here still cottony stuff the stem color which is this cream like off-white cream color the veil remnants which were attached here covering the gills and there's still like a little skirt of that stuff here the large patch that's not broken up into little dots sometimes it's like less whole than this and it'll be kind of off to the side or something like that but it's a it's a patch of material the striated edge right here this like little pattern this color um that's pretty much my checklist i guess that i look at before i put it in my basket if there's a lot of them it could be like kakora 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 deadly mushroom just like that. And if you just go on autopilot and you're like, then you get home with a basket of mushrooms and like someone else is cooking dinner and they just grab them and cut them up. And you're like, oh, I didn't really, eh, well, whatever. They're all dead. That's how I do it. Like I said, if you go on that alone and just eat, go out picking Kokoras and identifying them, you're kind of a dumbass and you might end up dead. At this point, I'll be surprised to find some good bull eats. But even one or two, just so I can have some this year, it'd be nice. This is not a bully that's a sweelus, which is closely related, also has the pores. I'm like tempted to try to figure out something to do with it, like cooking it down into like a solid bouillon that I can dissolve in water to make stock and thicken things because it's kind of slimy. But year after year, I'm like, I should do that. I should try that. I really don't get around to it. They don't taste bad, but I've noticed. Oh my god. Oh, oh good. Mm. I bent that stick out of the way like this, and instead of just breaking off, like a section broke out of the middle and hit me right in the eye. There's our bear again. Maybe I'm just early. Maybe I can come back in a week and the clean bowl eats will be a, a poppin'. Sometimes I think these ridges are earlier, and sometimes I think they're later, and I can't remember if I'm remembering right either way. There's our bear. Let's go see if we can see him. Hello, bear. We're just looking for some mushrooms up here. Since you're not walking away, I'm kind of like, do I want to follow you and see you? We had a standoff going here. It stopped moving. I stopped moving. It's like, am I going to run away? And I'm like, am I going to go over and peek over the ridge to see if I can see that bear? When it decided not to run away when it heard me coming up the ridge a long time ago, I'm kind of like not going to go there. And that's not the sound of a deer. That's either a bear or a person. I don't know, maybe a pig or some exotic animal like a lion. <laughs> so I'm going to go this way. 
let's leave Mr. Bear alone. Oh, and here's a big like bed thing. Yeah, that's that's not recent. If an animal has just gotten up from a bed like this, you can feel the, the heat easily. You don't have to like try or guess or be like, is it warm? Like it'll be warm, warm. Sometimes complete with fleas jumping on you. That bear's not gonna mess with us, very, very unlikely. But it also wasn't like, I'm just gonna run away. Oh my God, it's a human, I'm so scared. That's the bear I wanna follow. <laughs> is the bear that's like, uh, I'm gonna get away from this human, not the bear that's like, <laughs> not sure I'm gonna run away. It's funny the, the crap that people think about the places that other people live and the stereotypes, you know? A lot of people you'd say like, mention Alabama and they're like, Alabama, you know, and they have all these stereotypes and stuff about it. When you say California, people think of like palm trees and beaches and bikinis and movie stars. <laughs> and let me tell you, Northern California is not like that. We have huge tracts of wilderness. I mean, you think like states back east with a bunch of woods are wild. Very sparsely populated. We have a very low population. For some reason, and I'm all for it, a lot of retirees from Southern California just skip Northern California altogether. And they're going to like Idaho, Montana, driving the prices up, annoying everybody. Sorry guys about that, but I hope they keep doing it. I want to keep Northern California awesome. This is just the usual like post logging mess. You know, it's like a bunch of trees competing for light really quick and then just starting to die. Like the weak ones just start dying off and they, they tend to leave oftentimes a bunch of weak spindly trees. You know, they've been competing so hard for resources. Sometimes that could be a good thing in terms of like, uh, yeah, see all, all we're seeing is, is these sweetless. That's it. That's all I'm finding up here. Oh well, at least I got out, got some exercise. And we're not, I'm not gonna give up quite yet. I'm just, I'm kind of hoping for one good edible mushroom for dinner at this point. See like, here's a big tree that they left on purpose. You know, it's got a yellow stripe on it. Apparently it means leave this tree. There's another big fir right there, probably for seed trees. So those, you know, are dropping seeds all over the area, you know, creating this. 20 years later or whatever it is. Anyway, sometimes that can be a benefit for these like conifers because they don't grow large branches low down. And so you get like a pretty long skinny trunk that's like doesn't have a lot of branches. And then eventually as enough stuff dies off, it forms into something that's millable and not too horrible. Now this is a big crossroads right here. That bear is going this way, it's going this way, and it's going that way. And there's a huge big just flat pounded down spot here that bears probably just hanging here oh it could be bigfoot too of course big heavy animals plonking around taking big giant craps this is it's like daytime hangout probably around like early evening head out start foraging for the night yeah this is a, this is like pretty pointless here so i'm gonna head down the hill and not take the uh bear direction clearly he's kind of like this is my space and i'm not quite ready to leave it my typical response like automatic default mode for bears is to run after them and chase them away like from my house but like they always run <laughs> like if they're, if they're not gonna run i'm not gonna chase them i'm not completely stupid maybe just like part stupid yeah so i mean one kokora that i could probably i mean it, it actually isn't buggy so i mean that's it's okay i can eat that for dinner and i may still find something on the way back i'm gonna kind of like plow down this steep hill to a little basin over here where there's sometimes <clears throat> something good. A, a lot of times the first major stuff that I can get is around Thanksgiving, which is what, like a couple weeks away or something. Or maybe it's only a week away, I, I don't know. But it's the 13th now. But like the bull eats, they're, they're often like a, just a hair earlier. And like I said, if you don't get them when they're kind of like button stage, they're usually full of bugs. Oh, here's some honey mushrooms. They're kind of old. <laughs> These aren't bad. Our malaria, bane of arborists and trees. They kill a lot of trees, apparently, just infecting the trees and uh, rotting them out. I mean, that's enough for my dinner, but it'd be fun to find something else or some other fun natural history thing like Bigfoot.
And now that there is a fresh log. Fresh looking log there. Who knows, maybe that bear ate all the bull eats. And I haven't really had a really good mushroom year for quite a while. Still holding out some hope that this year will be the year. Honestly, it's not looking too good. Oh, there's some oyster mushrooms. Well, that's somewhat encouraging. Maybe that'll spur me on to take a more circuitous route home. Yeah, those aren't too bad. I mean, they're not like daisy fresh, but they're not like super old either. And like I said, it's, you know, it's late for oyster mushrooms. So this is a kind of a lucky find. Typically they start right after the first rains, which was a long time ago, but that's perfectly edible. I mean, it'd be just like a little bit tough, but I have some extra half and half at home so I could make like a nice uh, cream of mushroom soup with these. Oh damn, I forgot to get butter when I was in town. Another thing I like to do with these, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, is make mushroom stock, like a bouillon. So you could take pretty old oyster mushrooms and just cook them down for a long time, chop them up, cook them down for a few hours, strain it, and then cook that liquid down until it's super thick and dark. And then I'll freeze those in ice cubes and uh, just, you know, throw an ice cube or two into a soup or to make a sauce. Super delicious. Anyone who forages for mushrooms a lot in oyster mushroom territory knows that you will find like just huge amounts sometimes that are either it's more than you can just handle eating or they're a little bit old and they're kind of like they don't get really buggy that bad. They're big and they're like rubbery but they have a ton of flavor and um, yeah makes a really delicious mushroom bouillon which by the way just in general mushroom bouillons are like a secret weapon for umami especially for vegetarians and vegans but i mean i just use the stuff uh <clears throat> like a shiitake extract it's basically just shiitake powder shiitake extract and salt i get it i ordered it off amazon i went on there and i found the one that didn't have any msg and that's the one i buy man that stuff is so good some of them have like hydrolyzed yeast in them as well. I'll put a link to the one that I buy in the description. It's like almost like little p tiny pellets, like sprinkles. It's like adult sprinkles, umami sprinkles. But you can just like put it in a shaker and shake it on top of food. I just think that mushroom extracts like that should be in wider use as flavorings because they're super convenient and super tasty. Well, we did okay after all. Cream of three mushroom soup. If I don't find a fourth species on the way home. Oh wow, the tan oaks in this area have just thinned themselves out from sudden oak death. There's still some, but there's just, you know, everywhere you go, there's just fallen tan oaks everywhere. And you can like look up and see way fewer than there used to be. Again, this looks like a frequently used bear trail, though not, not as frequent as those others. But you could just see how like, it's just all pushed down in these big slumpy, bigger divots you know deer don't do that and you look down there just just tan oak trees everywhere <laughs> dead falling over and eventually that affects the mushroom crop this honey mushroom was growing on a tan oak the oyster mushrooms are growing on a tan oak chances are that this kokora's root uh mycelium was entwined and interconnected and interreliant on the roots of a tan oak that that could be partly responsible already for me not finding as many mushrooms but it's clearly not the only reason because those trees up on the ridge are not really affected yet yeah so like this is a classic example right here where there's just a huge impression where this bear has probably stepped numerous times with you know however much it weighs just i'm not really into bear hunting i uh i don't sport hunt not into it. I don't really like bear meat that much. I mean, I've had it enough to know that I don't want to eat a whole bear. And most other people I know don't want to eat a signif significant portion of a bear either. It's not like I can just give it away. On rare occasions, I'll carry a sidearm out here in the woods. It's not that dangerous to be out here, just statistically. I mean, it's just true that when you spend time in the woods the way that I do, like crashing through underbrush and burrowing in to like literally like the place that the large dangerous predator sleeps, <laughs> you know, I mean, you certainly are increasing your risk of uh, getting on the wrong side of something dangerous, which around here is just pretty much bears and mountain lions, although there are wild boars and they do it, go after people sometimes. It happens. And again, you know, when you 
do the things that I do in the woods. Like, here's a story. My ex-wife and I, we drove out some country road way out in the mountains, and there's like this little park there where you can park your car, and it's just like, it's just like a tiny little redwood thing where you can go, oh, look at this pretty redwood grove, you know? But we, you know, we're like looking for resources. Like, we were looking for some kind of sticks. I don't remember what. I think it was like spear shafts, uh, bay spear shafts or something. From something just like that, where like a bay tree will fall over. <clears throat> that one's been over for like two years. And there's all these sprouts. It's called nascent growth. So the tree falls over and it thinks, oh no, like I don't have a top anymore. My top is laying down. Like I need to grow up, right? And so all these buds along the branch, it's just, I could see just like a huge row of them there. Just start going straight up to replace the top of the tree. Physiology of a tree, most trees. So I think we were looking for those or something like that. We just ended up bushwhacking way up this really steep, you know, scrubby, rocky, dry ravine thing. Get way up there. Like for us, we just don't think twice about that. But how many people at this place where everyone stops at the roadside all the time on a daily basis has gone up there in the last what, 30 years or whatever, right? So we're hiking kind of, I think we were like starting to hike back down this dry ravine. And I was like, hey, what's that metal pipe there? And I like grabbed it and I pulled this thing out and I was like, that looks like a shotgun barrel. What's that shoe doing sticking out of the, because it was like, you know, where like in a creek or like, especially these kind of dry ravines that are have water occasionally, like sticks will pile up and dam up dirt and rocks and like in these little cascading dams. And uh, yeah, like there's a shoe and then it's like, oh, what's that? Like, oh, that's a skull cap. And so it looked like someone either went up there and shot themselves, which I think is the most likely explanation or had a hunting accident or something like that. But the point is that, you know, judging from the clothes, which were like this blue polyester looking thing with a big gold buckle, like I was like, that looks like the 70s, you know? So we're thinking maybe like 30 years previous or something like that. And, uh, you know, how many people had even gone up that far to where they would possibly walk across it? And then of course a bunch of people wouldn't notice because like I notice things in the woods that probably most people or a lot of people, certainly people who aren't accustomed to being in the woods a lot would never notice, you know, just like a little shape of something, like a little out of place thing. Because I'm always, tuned in since I have this background in primitive technology I'm always tuned in to like artifacts and like odd shapes that don't belong you know there wouldn't be a round rock like up there you know naturally very unlikely so I'm going to see that it's going to jump out at me where it might not with most people but I think most likely you know like very few people have been up there because people don't claw their way up these like brushy inclines and what I'll probably do is like Prepare a bunch of these mushrooms, mince up a little bit of onion, saute that gently. Don't burn it. Don't burn the onions. If you burn the onions, throw them away and start over. I'm not going to caramelize the onions. Not for like a cream mushroom type of soup. I don't want that either. Not that that's not appropriate sometimes, but like there, see? I'm like, what's that rock? Is that round? It isn't really round. But if that were round, I'd be like, a person brought that up here, almost certainly. I don't know, I'm just, I've always been like that. My nickname used to be Eagle Eyes when I was a little kid, because I would just scan the ground and I'd, I'd find stuff all the time, like money and jewelry. And, or like caramelized onions, you know, not burnt, that's different. Like it's a slow process at low temperature for, it just has to take time to caramelize. Uh, but not for this, that's not what I want. So just saute gently until clear, you know, add the mushrooms, maybe saute that stuff for a while. I don't know if I have any chicken stock or something like that. So I may not be able to do that. Just use a lot of mushrooms because they have like a rich savory meaty flavor anyway. Some of that shiitake extract, um, probably some like red ripe pepper. Uh, just minced really fine and not not a ton of it but just a little bit will play well with any kind of like cream sauce I find and then you know I could either take that and add like a little bit of half and half say and some flour and thicken it and put it on pasta or rice as like a you know like a white sauce salt and pepper obviously or just add more you know more milk slash bouillon slash chicken broth and then thicken that a little bit to make like a cream mushroom soup. Very simple, straightforward. Don't muddle it up. Don't make it overcomplicated. 
something nasty here, unless that's me that smells that bad. <laughs> something dead or rotten here. If I stand here long enough, I can catch like the wind direction and narrow in on it, but I, I don't really care. Like I'm, I'm not keen to find some dead thing <clears throat> right now, unless it's a Bigfoot. I've always intended to do more natural history videos where, you know, just walking around the woods and kind of reading the woods and like what's going on, uh, the way things grow and the process of succession. Big prehistoric looking thing is called uh, California ginseng or spikenard, Aurelia californica. Crazy looking, alien looking root. It's really a rhizome, but like if I were to dig this up, you know what, let's just, we don't, we don't have to harvest it. Cause I've tried to use it before, similar to ginseng or Siberian ginseng really. Oh, there it is. Expose the root so we can look at it. Uh, but I find that it really upsets my stomach, like chronically. I can't uh, take it. I get, after a little while, I start to get this chronic heartburn. It's really weird. Uh, it's not like an acute effect where it just happens and then it's gone. It's like a long-term thing. Uh, I have no idea what's up with that, but that's, that's how it is, so I don't take it. Anyway, if we could get this cleaned off, you could see how, like, it's just this crazy looking prehistoric. And these are the leaf scars, so there's like one year's growth, uh, probably another one here, another one here, and then this. And then next year it'll send out like another little boink. Actually, this is it right here. It's already starting to form, but it'll tend to creep, you know, this way and just get longer and longer. They're pretty neat. So yeah, I don't know why I can't take that stuff, um, but I tried, I can't. It's supposedly it's very similar in effect to Siberian ginseng. That's, that's what they say. Man, look at the burls on that maple tree and the, the burl at the base too. That's like a big burl, but like that piece of wood right there, if you milled that thing and polished it up, it would be psychedelic. Not to mention that you could pop off those big knobs and turn them into bowls and stuff. Go cook some nice mushroom dinner thing.